having a confession to make to you. That's the first item on our mail time. A society lady and a dignified death. The choir sang amazing grace on the old baptismal steps. Gone are the parties and those sweet cigarettes. Gone is the absence of late Mr. Jones on the far side of the bed. But how high was that Brooklyn sky? And how many mid-Julys did you burn through? Good luck to I threw in some organic wheat flour and some banana right there for good measure. Just gonna mix all this up into like a dough. All right, we got the fire going in the wood stove and I've got the cast iron griddle on top using the heat of the wood to grill these dog treats up. And then uh, we'll do about two or three batches of these guys right now and they're going to love them. All right guys, I have a confession to make to you. <sighs> I love blankets. I'm obsessed with blankets. I really enjoy having blankets. Is anybody else out there really like blankets? I just love curling up on the couch with a good, nice, warm, cozy blanket. So I have quite a few of them and I crochet. So I have also made a lot of blankets. <laughs> so don't worry, there's a point to all this and I'll get to it. But what I've noticed being here, living in a yurt in the rainforest, is that things get a lot moldier a lot faster and I had all my blankets in a basket in like a wicker basket and I pulled one out the other day and it kind of smelt wet like mildewy wet Ugh, don't like that so I washed all of them and I don't want to put them back in this basket because I don't want it to happen again so I decided since I have a lot of trees to make a blanket ladder and I'm really excited <laughs> because my mom has one and they're really cool. I think my mom has one. I've just seen other people have them and I think they're really cool. I think it's a really good idea to have out here because you're able to hang them up and they get airflow. They're not stuffed into a basket and it's really pretty. And I have tons of trees and I get to make it myself. So that's what I'm going to be doing today is making a blanket ladder. I will show you where I'm going to put it. Um, underneath the loft, I have a couple of things that I have to move, but I think it's going to look really perfect there. So let's go check it out. There's not a whole lot of lighting underneath the loft yet, um, but I did put some really cute little fairy lights behind the futon that we have here. And as you can see, here are all my blankets that I have. Um, I've gotten this at a concert. Jake and I got this in Tofino. Um, I got this in Oregon. <laughs> so I do have... Um, a couple of blankets. So this black thing that's right behind me is where I'm gonna put the blanket ladder. Um, this is just a bunch of totes that has like yearbooks in it, photo albums and stuff like that. I'm just gonna move that over there and I think it'll look really nice over here because it's right next to our desk and the futon so it'll be easier access to grab a blanket. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna measure right now of kind of how high I want it to be and kind of um, how I want it to look. So yeah, let's just do this.
Okay, so it's gonna sit up against this wall, which I think it'll look really nice. I think I'm just gonna have it about five feet. I think that's good because it's just gonna lean like this. I don't want it too high because I do like the hats right here. And then I think coming up, I don't think I want it to be just like a regular ladder that just goes up. I'm gonna have it kind of tilted in like this and then they'll come up so they'll go bigger to smaller, like a Christmas tree, I guess. I think that would look really cool. And. I just realized that I am very blue today. Blue leggings on, a blue top. I'm very blue today. So yeah, so I'm just gonna go outside and pick the branches that I want, saw them, and uh, yeah. So here we are. This is kind of what it's going to look like. I actually ended up changing out these. I got these a couple of days ago and they're more dry than these ones. And I honestly like how these ones are a little bit smaller and thinner. Um, they just look a lot nicer. So I'm glad that I switched those out. So now all I have to do is just screw in these and that's it.
How do you like it? I like it. Is it what you pictured? Um, yeah. Can you deal with um, having like woodsy type decor in here? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Interesting. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Can the camera even pick that out here? I don't know. You get to see. Okay, so here is the finished ladder. I think it turned out really good. I'm going to fix the blankets. I just put it up there right now just to show you what it looks like. But I like it a lot. I think it looks really good. Very earthy. You want to back up, babe? <laughs> he's, my, he's my light man. <laughs> but I like it. I think it looks very open without those totes right there and mm. everything else. So very cool. Do you where, like? Where do the totes go? Behind you. I have to figure, I have to find a home for them. I mean, like we just need to get, we're just noticing that whenever we put something on the ground, trap something, um, the edges get moisture. So we have to try to free up the edges yeah. and make more fluff because anything that's not trapped in the corner is dry and perfect. Yeah. So that's definitely going to help out the blanket situation. So because they were tucked in the corner in a basket. Yeah, that's what I was telling them. Yeah. So now they're all like flowing and free. And... Nothing beats a nice clean stove. It looks great. And all of this that I pulled out of the stove is gonna go perfect in my plants. My house plants are going to love it. And obviously I'm not gonna use all of this for my house plants because I don't have that many house plants yet. Um, but in the future, Jake and I are gonna use this in our garden, in our raised beds. This is like gold. Um, but for now, just house plants and maybe save it for our future garden. But nice clean stove. Can't wait to put a fire in it. It's not that cold right now. It's maybe about 40 degrees outside, maybe about 50 something in here. And it's really, it's not that bad. So it's perfect opportunity for me to clean that out and stuff for, um, yeah, cause you gotta keep it clean. <laughs> so I just have a little scooper and I'm just gonna scoop it and put it as like a top soil on my house plants here.
Thank you very much. What is this drink? It's hot cocoa. Mm. No, it's not. That is so good. Does it taste good? Yeah, that's so nice. Thank you. Well, you can thank one of our fans because someone sent us a mushroom cow mix. That's the first item on our mail time? Yeah, so mail time. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a cacao mushroom mix with reishi. Yes, so there's a note that goes with it. So one of the fans out there who watches our show uh, named Chi Chi sent us this. So thank you so much Chi Chi for thinking of us and putting all the effort into sending it our way. We really appreciate all the thoughts and love and effort you guys put into sending us these great things. Our PO box is down below if you wanna send us something great and include it in our mail time segment. What does Chi Chi say? Dear Jake and Nicole, my name is Chi Chi and I've been watching you since Hannah and Derek took a tour of your garden in Phoenix, Arizona. That was the first time that I met um, High Carb Hannah and, and Derek, the hand D-man. They came over to my old desert garden and we met during a garden tour. Yeah, I think yeah. I've seen that footage. It's on YouTube. Um, it has been great to follow all you've been doing. Thank you both for your amazing and inspirational videos. I truly enjoy seeing your home grow and expand and it is wonderful to watch your beautiful love for one another uh, flourish. I hope you enjoy the marshmallows and the cacao. When I saw it was made with one of your favorite reishi mushrooms, because our cat's name is reishi, I thought of you two and had to get it for you guys to try it with the marshmallows. I also got myself a cacao to try. Maybe we can drink together if you film it, lol. Well, I hope you're drinking it because we're drinking it right now, and Gun it's really good. Ganbei. 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 <laughs> I also saw this cool little gadget for measuring unique spots, like around wood uh, posts. So they, she also got us this really cool measuring gadget. Which Chi Chi, you should have foreseen this and sent this to us before I put in the floor of the yurt. I needed this for the corner. Yeah, this is really cool. So like if you're measuring like something like this, you just put this like that and then you get the measurement. And then That's I could like, cool. I could have used this because I could have then put this on a board and I could have traced the exact arc and then I could have cut. Yeah, but it's good, good for the future because we're definitely going to be building more things. So. And I have to redo the last two layers of laminate floor at the front of the yurt by the front door because it's gotten wet since the roof and the intro mudroom is not done yet, I gotta replace those boards because they've started to swell from rain getting inside the yurt uh, whenever we go in and out the front door. Yeah. So we'll use this for that. Yes, so thank you so much for the marshmallows and the hot cocoa and the measuring and the beautiful note. So thank you so much. Yeah. I went down to the P.O. box and got this one and I was like, boom. <laughs> we got Canadian maple syrup. Yeah, it's a big thing of maple syrup. This is awesome. This person says, Dear Jake and Nicole, I've been following Jake since your longevity garden. That was my desert garden's name. Trying to learn more about gardening, I instantly became a fan due to the natural, organic way you gardened. Welcome to Canada, best country in the world. I am really enjoying your new adventures. Please enjoy this maple syrup from a local First Nation business here in Northern Ontario. Looking forward to all your new and upcoming videos. Sincerely, Melanie. So thank you so much. She's on YouTube if you want to look her up at Melaroni. I believe it's Melaroni, but we'll check it out. So Melanie, thank you so much for thinking of us. And we didn't want to open it until we show you guys, but we use maple syrup, pure maple syrup, for so much of our cooking, uh, not only for coffee sweetener, but also for desserts. Um, and also for our granola and oatmeal and things like that. So this is a great gift. And the glass bottle is really cool. Oh, we're gonna reuse the heck out of this. For sure, yeah. Yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. So this is really sweet and... Uh, yes, it's very sweet. We've got... intended. <laughs> <laughs> we have gotten some really interesting things during the mail time segment and some of the things we have chosen not to show you guys because they're, they're very interesting. I'll just say that. Um, so the, this maple syrup is great because it's in an unopened package. Um, we've gotten some people that have sent us some food items that have been already opened and I don't know, I just don't have enough guts to eat an already opened food item that's sent to me by somebody I don't know. So we love that this was new, it was untapped, it was sealed and we're going to enjoy the heck out of it and then reuse yeah. the bottle for a lot of our own um, prepared foods coming up, so thanks. Okay, and this company I'm kind of torn on, they are called The Square Banana, I'm sure it will flash across the screen. 
This company emailed us and said, hey, we wanna send you some of these vegan, nutritious energy bars that are just basically banana. This one is banana and pineapple, and this one is banana. Just 100% banana. That's the only ingredients. So this one literally only has banana and pineapple. This is only banana. Now, I have a hard time with stuff like this, and I'm gonna be honest, because I love that companies make vegan products. I like the packaging. They sent us four of them. I thought they were gonna send us like a month's supply so we can eat them during all of our projects, but we opened the package and there was four of these little guys in there. So I literally went and I inhaled them and they were gone. We saved, because they're so small. Yeah. Like, I eat this in my sleep. So we saved two to eat with you guys. But I have a hard time with things like this because the environmentalist and the sustainability guy inside of me starts thinking. And I start thinking about where did these bananas grow and what did it take to prep the land to grow the banana palms? Then they had to harvest the bananas and ship them probably across the world. Then they had to take those bananas and dehydrate them and process them down to these squares. Then they had to make materials like this packaging to then package those square bananas. Then they had to put them back into a box, back into a truck or back into a plane or back into a boat, ship them to the stores or ship them people like me. And I just feel like the banana already comes in a package and it's called the, its skin. So if you can just go out and buy bananas, even if they're shipped across the world, you're already eliminating so many steps. Why are we messing with things that nature already does better? And if you live in a climate where you can grow your own bananas, then you can cut out even more steps and grow your own bananas. So I'm not saying I don't like these, they're delicious. They're very good. But it's just bananas that are dehydrated. You could go and buy your own bananas and dehydrate them yourself, but Let's open them because they were sent to us by this lovely company who's trying to do their best and let's eat one. So I have the... Pineapple? I no, have the I banana have... one. Okay. So... They're good. They're very good. I mean, I just love chewy, dehydrated bananas. Yeah. Switch. <gasps> it's just a fruit leather, a fruit roll-up. But... We'll put their links below. The pineapple one's good too. They're very well, chewy, yeah. So if these are in stores, or if you can order them off their site, do it because it's better to eat this than I would say to eat an energy bar that's full of man-made stuff or full of like animal products. But this is even better, and that's all I'm gonna say. Which one do you want? Let's finish it. Yeah. So thank you very much to The Square Banana for thinking about it. Last but not least, we have one more thing for our mealtime segment that I wanted to talk about, and that is a Pure Rose Rose Nectar. I did a whole episode on my Nicholistic channel talking about why I love this drink so much, what I use it for, and the benefits of it. Um, the link will be in one of these corners. You guys should totally go follow Nicholistic, Nicole's um, personal YouTube channel. Yeah, I've been trying to post a video a week. Um, doing yoga routines, talking about teas that I like, and being a girl living off the grid. Sorry, I'm like yelling now because the rain is starting to pick up. Um, but definitely go check out the video of Pure Rose or check out their website. This drink is wonderful. I absolutely love it. I love adding it to my tea or my coffee in the morning or just taking a shot of it. Um, it's full of minerals, vitamins, um, nutrients. I mean, it's delicious and it just I don't know, it makes my insides feel good. Can I ask a question about this? Yeah. So if I were to grow roses and take rose petals and put it in water or in lemonade and drink it, how is that different than this? Um, this is rose nectar. What you're talking about is rose water. So this is like a concentrate? Yeah, it's a concentrate from Bulgarian roses, which are not your ornamental roses. So Bulgarian roses are smaller and they are packed with more nutrients than a regular rose that you get. But like if you go to the store and buy roses, that is full of chemicals and pesticides and you don't want to make rose water with that. But if you're growing roses, yeah. But the Bulgarian roses is more of like a medicinal rose versus just a regular rose that you grow at home. And that's what this is, Bulgarian roses and all their links will be down below, but this is seriously like, I drink it every day and it's amazing. So go check that out. So one thing that's happening right now is that um, all the people that have acreages in this area, um, we kind of exchanged emails and an email went out and they said there's a huge weather pattern, not a hurricane, but a huge weather pattern, like an atmospheric river. And if you ever heard about this before, um, it's very interesting. Go online and search atmospheric river. There are rivers in the sky that hold more water than the rivers on earth. So more than the Amazon, more than the Nile, more than the Columbia and more than the Mississippi, and one of these rivers is positioning itself over top of uh, Vancouver Island right now, and we're getting a downpour. So 
I can't even tell you how Nicole and I didn't have a lot of rain the last two and a half weeks. And one of our IBC totes that we had full of rainwater that collects the water off the carport, we have coming into the yurt through the pump, the hand pump, and we had drained it down to almost empty. It's full again just since this morning in a couple hours. It has been raining like crazy. I'm sure you guys can hear it, but it's been off and on and just like, psh, to just trickle to psh, and then like yeah. Jake and I are like talking and then we're like getting really, really loud because the rain is getting really loud. It's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. Like it does feel like God, if you believe in that, opened up the ocean above us and is dumping a Noah's Ark type of rain on us. So much rain. So much rain. Like the dog bowl was outside and it was empty and it was just like overflowing from just this morning. With like within minutes. It, it didn't rain last night. It started this morning. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you outside in about 30 seconds and show you eight different areas of the property and the rain coming down. So stay tuned. Next time on Jake and Nicole Living Off Grid. Many of you watched me turn my desert landscape into a thriving food forest. In the desert, we have the monsoon. The rain at Como Rebi pours down more than any place I've ever seen. It's like a monsoon rain hitting consistently. Welcome back, Matt. <laughs> Next time, we are covered by an atmospheric river. Join us. <laughs>